Hey, welcome back today for another uh, episode. Today we'll be talking uh, about the Yoruba ethnic group uh, and Yoruba people. Uh, the Yoruba people are um, located in Nigeria uh, and also in Benin and a little bit in, uh, throughout different countries in West Africa. But it's one of the most predominant uh, ethnic groups and tribes in West Africa. Um, a little history about the Yoruba tribe is that um, uh, uh, actually the Yoruba tribe uh, was formed from a Volta Niger uh, population that was uh, said to come from uh, Egypt, then through Sudan, then to West Africa. And some say that uh, it was uh, strictly from Sudan uh, or the Niger, uh, Central Africa and West Africa area, and then uh, migration of that population of people from the Volta Niger uh, population um, over 3,000 years ago or about 2,800 years ago, somewhere around there. So um, if, let's say from uh, the first millennium BCE, which means uh, BCE means, uh, I'm sorry, BCE means uh, before common era, meaning that uh, anything before year one, um, you know, they count and they actually count up years um, as events come closer. I know that might be a little bit confusing, but after year one, uh, then they count events up like, you know, 1200s, 1300s, 1400s, 1500s, 1600s, 1700s. And when it says BCE before common era, that means they count down. Um, so when you're talking about events, you'll talk about um, year 100, year 200, year 300, year 400, but just in the two opposite directions. Right here is the middle year zero, even though that doesn't exist, but year zero is in the middle. And then BC, oh, I'm sorry. Um, um, uh, yeah, before common error would be this way back. And then after common error, obviously, um, would be this way up, which is year one from until 2014 right now, right? So um, from the first millennium uh, BCE, uh, the Ifa uh, kingdom was the most predominant uh, in the Nigeria area, um, and it was it was still Yoruba people. Um, but the Ifa kingdom was from the first uh, millennium BCE all the way up into the uh, 1600s. Um, so a very very ancient kingdom, um, man. I mean, like you know, thousands of years old. Um, and then after uh, the the rise of certain other uh, you know branches of the Yoruba tribe uh, as far as in the military and the government um, eventually in the 1600s um, they created the Oyo Empire or Oyo I hope I said I'm, I apologize if I'm saying it wrong to anybody of uh, Yoruba descent but I, I want to say it's um, if I'm saying it correctly the Oyo uh, Empire and the Oyo Empire um, was actually uh, very prevalent from the 1600s into the 1800s and actually before I even go to the Oyo Empire let's go back to the the uh, the the Ifi Empire between the Ifi and Oyo Empire um, there basically uh, was a time period called the Golden Age and the during the Bronze Age and that's when uh, a lot of the Yoruba people um, even before you know they were considered themselves as Yoruba but um, as far as the people uh, Yoruba people that, that derived from the Volta Niger population um, they were having a boom in their uh, in their Bronze uh, era um, the Enlightenment era um, buildings and um, and uh, some of the most sophisticated art in Africa ever to exist um, carvings and just beautiful artwork and beautiful bronze work um, some of the best manipulators of bronze and alchemy that I've ever seen I mean some of the 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 um, the statues and heads and uh, different kind of art that they have is just so amazing that this art you know in the museum especially um, existed you know 1500 years ago you know like or 800 years ago or 1600 1700 years ago like this is very ancient stuff you know very ancient stuff and um so getting back to the oyo empire um starting in the 1600s all the way up to the 1800s the oyo oyo empire uh was the most notable after the ifa, ifa empire um for the yoruba people and uh, the oyo empire obviously like every uh kingdom does uh, expanded um it expanded throughout the Ni nigeria um benin area and uh they were very very skilled um as far as uh, armies go, uh, as far as tacticians go, uh, as far as general goes, uh, there was uh, numerous amounts of kings that were very successful uh, in the Yoruba um, 
empire um, as far as uh, you know as far as the two major uh, empires that they had which is the Ifa and the Oyo and um, during this Oyo time period um, in the 1600s uh, in the uh, 1400 1600s 1700s 1800s um, the Oyo Empire was the height of pinnacle um, the height of um, of um, Knowledge, the height of uh, tacticians, uh, politics, civil, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, there of the civilization of the growth of the kingdom, um, to, to you know, amongst um, wealth and and uh, politics and enlightenment period as far as you know, moving basically anything that you would have to do to expand a kingdom or a country you have to learn different things there's some things that you might not know when you're in a smaller group that now you have problems that are were occurring um, as far as war between uh, different kingdoms uh, wars between different uh, kingdoms from different countries uh, you know European countries uh, Arab countries um, or I'm sorry yeah yeah Arab countries um, so you had a lot of different um, a lot of different things that you had to tackle as a king of the Ifa and Oyo Empire, which belongs to the Yoruba uh, people in Yoruba tribe. Um, so during this time period, uh, there was a lot of politicians that had to uh, set up a system that a system that would work for a bigger kingdom. Um, so the system that would work for a bigger kingdom all had to have checks and balances, or at least that's the philosophy of uh, the Yoruba people in the Oyo Kingdom was um, that there had to be checks and balances. So even though the 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 king and the the ruler um, had his power um, and he in and had political power as well, there was checks and balances to where the uh, the people had. Um, uh, a group of people and if not just a person that controlled the people um, so there was always checks and balances if there was politicians and kings that felt this way if the people didn't agree with it uh, there was always a checks and there was a check and balance and there was a head of uh, of, of that group um, or a group of people that were elected by the people and basically you know had just as much power because if they felt as if the um, kings and politicians were not being faithful or true or some kind of coup or espionage or whatever um, they would um, advise the people and the people would make a decision with them to say hey we need to oust this king we need to uh, make sure this coup doesn't happen we need to make sure that the foreign invaders don't come in even though that maybe a lot of the politicians don't agree with it and a lot of the kings might not agree with it or maybe they do maybe it's the other delegations that are um, part of the government that doesn't agree on it so it all depended um, and also during this time period there was very very big um, boom in 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 uh in working together always the 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 core of working together has always been there but as far as um you know running water systems uh duct systems uh you know developing cities and countries according to uh where the best strategic points would be at for the kingdom and just a lot of things that were just thought out very 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 well like very well um, so that is the Oyo Empire. Uh, the Oyo Empire was very, very rich in copper, um, obviously in a lot of the cultivation of uh, uh, vegetation, uh, livestock, you know, uh, of um, fish. Uh, there was uh, talks of, you know, the Oyo Empire having very, very good economics off of seafood because obviously it was, you know, right there. And uh, some of the best foods and some of the uh, some of the fish uh, that don't even exist anymore in, in uh, certain areas were talked about um, through the oil empire which uh, a lot of scientists and things are still trying to figure out what species that was and if they um, why they don't exist anymore um, but uh, the fish that were huge they were cultivating they had paintings on their kingdoms I mean huge fish and they were not sharks you know they were just fish so and obviously we know time periods go along uh you know maybe the waters and stuff in the water are more polluted than what they were so um but definitely they had they cultivated um they were very very well known for their copper designs uh a lot of people um from different kingdoms would ask them and pay them to uh make uh, you know copper um copper shields uh, just all kind of tactical stuff for armies for houses material things like that so this kingdom was very well funded and um 
the one thing I love about the Europa, uh, Europa people and the kingdoms is because, you know, with the Ifa, you know, time period and kingdom was so ancient, it sort of just transitioned into the Oyo um, kingdom. And I just love that about it because, I mean, you know, obviously there was a different uh, mindset and process and, and parts of the Europa people that were in power um, uh, created the Oyo empire. But um, just off the simple fact that this can be transcended and translated from almost, you know, if not 3,000 years ago, like that is a very, 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 very strong kingdom that they never talk about. You know, they just never talk about it. And, you know, obviously that's why I'm here. And I just I feel like that's just something that's just a shocking it should be shocking to you that we have so many ancient empires in Africa, but no one in the world is giving studies on this. And if, and if they are, they're not giving it to the masses, um, at least in America, um, and, unless you go to school for it and you want to dig more deeper into it. But by that time, they then probably brainwash you not to really even care, you know. So um, back to the oil empire, there was uh, developments of, of uh, system of houses and development of um, of um, gestures and uh very like uh, mystical and uh you know very just nostalgical things for instance um if a king or a head general was going to get ousted um there would be a time period before uh the you know the the general or the king was kicked out there would basically uh be symbolic um gifts that were given to let them know that hey it's time for you to leave you need to get out or further action will be taken um not not uh, all this i'm just gonna kill you for no reason and all this kind of stuff they try to paint there was actually logical and um very very well thought out political um, um processes that went on with ousting somebody or getting rid of somebody or basically telling somebody that, look we don't want you anymore we want a new leader or somebody else so for a lot of the kings and or leaders of the generals or the armies if they were going to get uh ousted or uh the, the mass people wanted them to leave uh there would be delivery delivering of 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 um, of parrot eggs so basically if i wanted you to to get out and i'm the king and you're the general or i'm the general you're the king and the people agree with me for you to get out they would bring uh one of the elders would bring a basket covered uh with beautiful cloth that the robot people make and inside of that cloth would have a parrot's egg and if it had a parrot's egg in it that meant Hey, yo, it's time for you to get out of here. Like, we're not even going to be like coming in here and say, oh, we're going to cut off your head, blah, blah, blah. We're so civilized, you know, in this sense that we can uh, uh, go inside and say, hey, this is how we were always as Africans. We know that we have respect for each other as black people and as Africans, and we know we have respect for each other. So there's no we, we trust your service. We appreciated your service. But now if you did something wrong or if it's just time for you to leave, we're we are basically telling you in the nicest way that we can in the most so that's something very uh, interesting to keep in mind that just because you were from a certain ethnic group doesn't mean that you know you couldn't go to another kingdom and um and, and be part of theirs and and be you know and, and still have your ethnic uh, identity and what you do um that's really never talked about and there were definitely many of times uh in history where people were trading where they were going amongst each other and the people would be very civilized with each other and not warring and not fighting um so that's the end of the oyo and the ifa empires uh the great one of the, some of the greatest empires in west africa and kingdoms uh, to ever exist um and very ancient over three thousand years old um and then you come to modern day Yoruba and you know the things that they have carried along in modern day Yoruba majority of the, them live in uh Nigeria and especially in the biggest the big city you know Lagos which is a very very big city if you've never been to Lagos you should go um you really enjoy the people and the culture and it's really beautiful um so the Yoruba um you know as far as culturally what they eat and what they do uh they eat a lot of uh, yams a lot of yam dishes um a lot of um cassava uh different kinds of sweet meats uh and uh different kind of dishes that they eat um obviously rice and beans um a coconut um uh coconut dishes that they make with coconuts and uh the production of palm wine and and, and different kind of beers and things of that nature um the yoruba also um when they marry the 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 men uh if they're more so traditional they will basically uh let a woman know with little signs uh leaving messages at her house um leaving notes when uh she's going to class you know without the woman ever seeing her and this is aided by uh the person's or the man's friend uh he the the man's friend 
the man's friends helps him out getting these messages conveyed to the to the woman uh basically letting her know that hey i want to marry you and um you know if you are you know obliged to that then uh, you know we you know we want to get together we want to be married you know so uh definitely this, that is part of the Yoruba culture that is really really deep and has been ancient and something that is very respected as far as how you come across to a woman um and in the Yoruba culture also uh the Yoruba people are very proud of of who they are and um the Yoruba people are very 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 good since they've been doing it for over two or three thousand years uh of, of crafting out of bronze and crafting uh you know different kind of mask and um art and culture um, and things things of that nature so I hope that you learned a lot about the Yoruba people today obviously on all my videos I will touch bases on these groups again and again and again because there's so much information so when I when I start out and I give you this kind of information this is just the starting point and I will definitely be breaking down each ethnic group it might not be now it might not be six months from now but at one point I will get back to it and I will break it down more and more and as time goes along you guys will join me and there will be a pile of information um, that I think that we should spread to each other um, we should spread to our kids we should spread to other ethnic groups it doesn't matter if you're African American Jamaican Haitian Somali Ethiopian uh, we need to understand that most of these countries didn't even exist and um, some uh, Europeans in the Berlin Conference uh, in the 1800s were cutting up Africa and uh, uh, basically taking their claim of what they wanted where they wanted things uh, natural resources and things like that so always look at yourself as a African citizen or as a as as, as the same the same you know everybody knows what it is one love Bob Marley Pan-African Thomas and Kerr um, you know Malcolm X you know what I'm saying the list goes on and on and on Zulu Cleopatra this is all us it's all us never make yourself feel like you're just one thing you know if you're Jamaican you just have to be Bob Marley or if you're Jamaican you have to be Marcus Garvey which is not a bad thing but I'm just saying or if you're um, if you're Ethiopian you have to be um, 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 Haile Selassie or if you you know you're um, from South Africa you have to be Zulu or you know you're from West Africa you have to be you know uh, Thomas and Kara or you know thousands and millions of other um, African leaders around the world that have done things for our, for our race and who we are um, and we will definitely keep getting farther so always look at yourselves as everything as a pharaoh as a as a uh, as a um, Kushite uh, you know as as a Zulu as a Nubian um, you know as a Shanti Igbo Fulani Tereg um, all these things always look at yourself like that and that is all for today so once again as always peace and blessings and love I hope you enjoyed the conversation um, if you like it, you know what to do. You always subscribe, comment, leave a message. And until next time, peace and blessings.